actually hired a photographer to shoot him at his desk with architectural plans in front of him. And, and he wearing a nice smart dark suit, he he actually He actually looked kind of like a nice guy. And and you could see the image he was trying to portray as likable. He had a nice smile, but not too much. And he was really well dressed and and was in a very expensive house and, you know, was the man he's described in the movie. And basically, um, he felt sorry for him because he, he seemed like a parody of a successful man. Well, so after doing more research, I realized he didn't even own many of the houses he claimed to own. I don't know where he gets the money, but at some point he uh, would lose the houses and they would go to bankruptcy court. Almost five of the previous homes that I had recorded and documented were taken over by the bank. So as I realized that it's an injury, that my mother was wrong, I uh, was on a quest to find out where his current address is. It took me quite a while many wrong directions I finally found I finally found his address in uh, well I shouldn't tell you that I can't no, I can't. But I know where he lives now. And I go visit, or I should say, stay outside, close, but not too close. And initially, I hoped very much to meet him or to run into him, not to tell him I have his stuff, but just to, you know, see what he's really like, because the astrological chart and the graphology report on his handwriting give me a vague idea, but a lot of people just don't feel that's very scientific. So I keep, thinking there's got to be a way to get closer and to document the man and his belongings and maybe that will give us some sort of answer to who he is. Ender video by Kari Upson. I think we've all been there. <laughs> I can relate. So good evening and welcome to the Billy Wilder Theater at the Hammer Museum. I'm James Buley, Director of Public Programs and Education and it's a pleasure to introduce tonight's program, a discussion with Hammer Project artists Kari Upson and Thomas Lawson, Dean of the School of Art at CalArt. So uh, we're going to get into it really quickly soon, but before I turn things over, uh, I just want to remind you to please silence your cell phones uh, to turn off the election updates. Uh, I want to let you know that the emergency exits are indicated by the red exit lights at the rear of the theater. 
very important. Uh, and I'd also like to encourage you to pick up a Hammer calendar on your way out. It's got a lot of the programs that we do here. They're all free, and you can help keep them free by becoming a member. So you can find out more information about that online or by sending some information. Well, you'd have to find out the information first and then send it in the mail. Well, see what happens. <laughs> send us a note, and we'll all figure out how to respond to senior staff. Uh, I hope you've spent some time in the installation by Kari Upson that's uh, down in our Hammer lobby gallery. Uh, it's up through the 17th of this month, and we, uh, our guards smartly decided to leave it open after the talk tonight, so you can go, go visit it if you have not already. Uh, on to our speakers tonight. Kari Upson was born in San Bernardino, California, and lives in Los Angeles. She studied at the New York School, Studio School and at CalArts, where she received her BFA in 2004 and her MFA in 2007. She has participated in exhibitions at High Energy Constructs in Los Angeles and 507 Rose in Venice, California, as well as numerous shows at the galleries at CalArts. Thomas Lawson works in many media, as diverse as the project he finds himself committed to. A beautiful sentence, by the way. It's a <laughs> incredibly dense. Uh, he has shown paintings at Metro Pictures in New York, Anthony Reynolds in London, and Rosamund Felsen Galleries in Los Angeles. His work's also been included in group shows at the ICA Philadelphia, the Museum of Contemporary Art in Houston, and the Brooklyn Museum. He's created temporary public works in New York, New Haven, Glasgow, Newcastle, and Madrid, and proposed many, many others. His essays have appeared in such journals as Art Forum, Art in America, Flash Art, Freeze, and October. From 1979 until 1992, he, along with Susan Morgan, published and edited Real Life magazine, and a regular publication by and about younger artists interested in the relationship between art and life. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, he's a recipient of numerous awards and has organized exhibitions around the world, as well as teaching at the School of Visual Arts and the Rhode Island School of Design. Finally, ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Kari Upson and Thomas Lawson. <laughs> we're a little intimidated by this setup. We think we're in a TV studio. <laughs> it's uh, I'm I'm going to be Melvin uh, Melvin Bragg, I think, on British uh, late night uh, talk talk show. <laughs> he interviewed uh, Tracy Emmons. Uh, the one that she was drunk. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Miller didn't bring the scotch tonight. Where's Miller? There he is. <laughs> there was a chance. Um, I was uh, I was actually going to start. The setup for this is I'm going to ask a few questions and Carrie, hopefully, will keep talking. And you're welcome to ask questions at any time. And then, however that goes, um, we'll stop at some point and uh, and open it to your questions. Um, I was going to start by asking, I'm kind of making some general remarks and um, asking about this, the, the overall setup, but I hadn't actually ever seen that video projected so large, which is kind of amazing. I mean, and, uh, you s get the whole comedic effect much more on the big scale, I think. Um, so I, I wanted to start by asking you about that. I mean, it's there you are sort of very matter-of-factly discussing his finances, his real estate deals, his, you know, your research is into his current abode, and all the time trying to pull his head off. And then once you get it far enough off, you start sawing it off. What's up with that? <laughs> <laughs> um, and who is he anyway? <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's funny because I, as I picked out that clip. I forgot there were areas in it um, that my lawyer, who's here tonight, actually suggests that I didn't include. Um, <laughs> so I was a little mortified about it. But it, I haven't actually taken the time to to psychoanalyze myself, and and because that that actual video was being shot uh, with a kind of rehearsed dialogue that I had done over and over. So by the time that I actually started shooting the video that you see here that was edited, I, it became this kind of banal, flat delivery of a do-it-yourself uh, uh, TV show so that 
the disparity between just kind of talking about whatever I remembered or that I was speculating about him was just coinciding with a thing that I knew I needed to do, which was rem remove the head, skin the head, put the head on myself. And that was, that was basically how the video came about. But what do you mean you knew you had to do those acts? The, why did Why did it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Originally, it was going to be the entire body. And um, it, if well, you remember correctly, it, I shot that video two days before my thesis exhibition. So I actually didn't have time. I mean, just to be honest, I didn't have time to do the entire body and I thought and it was called as long as it takes so I knew I was going to do one shot no there was there was never a break in order to even go to the bathroom I just knew that I was going to start uh, uh, the piece and end it when the the, the the deed was done so the head really came about from practical reasons of knowing this is all I could handle and in terms of somebody's front or like their likeness and who they are the head seems to be the most important feature so I started there but are you taking his head off because you want to know more about him or because you want to kill him there's no first of all it's a doll so we have to remember <laughs> there's no him there but um <laughs> the the but the but but, but well. the, the I think it was pointing in the new direction where it was the idea of becoming him or obliterating the space between me and him and how would I go about doing that. It was one of the, one of the, from peering from inside somebody's eyes, I, it, from, that's where it was leading to. I've got two questions. One, so was the mon did you write the monologue? I mean, no. is it a written one? No, so it's, it's just re it is rehearsed in the sense that I only knew what I knew about him, and I was wondering how long it would take before I had to almost start in the beginning and just repeat it. The original version of the video is about two hours long because I had told the story maybe five times, and it had changed obviously, and I was interested in the changes in him, in the story that even I started to create misinformation, or by the time I told something the third time, it wasn't anywhere near what I said the first time. So it's a kind of, it's a virtuoso performance, like something like the drawings, where you... What's virtu what do you mean? Virtuoso, I mean that you just... You just know how to do this somehow. I mean, in terms of the performance, you just... Um yeah. Well, it's, I think the only reason that I could even make that possible was the fact that um, it was private and I use, I filmed myself. Uh, I don't know why that's so important to me, but no, I didn't know how to perform. Uh, right. I mean, I'm curious about the the intensity of the way, you know, that you said you you shot this over a short period of time you know, two days before? It was two days before. Right. And it seems like a lot of your production is in a similar... Yes, but 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 I had thought about the video and written and about it for probably a year prior to it. Like, I had I had, I had thought about it. Uh-huh. Uh, and I had included, in, inclu included it in my drawings that are all over the charts. So I had I had a vague idea of what was going to happen. So, yeah, so you've been thinking about it for a year because you've been working on the project for about that. Exactly, yeah. So, what it, so how, let's go back to that. So what, what started the project? How, what's, what's, the, what's its beginning impetus? I actually thought, I, I knew that that was going to be my thesis before I even started my MFA program at CalArts um, because I had been sitting on the materials for a few years prior. So you've been thinking about it longer than the year then? Yeah. So. Yeah, but it, it, the way it, it, I, it, I had started the project halfway through my MFA, so it was one year that I had worked on it, like it, where it actually manifested in objects and um, actual work that most like 90% of the work that even went into this it's not seen because it's just like a kind of a manic mode or an operation almost where I don't know what it is that's going to be valuable to me until later but yeah the materials for this project I had actually 
uh, I don't know how to say it, um, found um, a couple years prior and had been thinking about it. And I actually didn't know the starting point until I started walking around school. And I've mentioned this story a lot because it is pretty important. Um, and I had two journals of his handwriting and his dreams and um, uh, some fantasies he had and that were written from the 70s and the 80s and um, were very personal. And I had lost one of the books at CalArts. And that, at that moment, I was very, I was pissed off. But then I realized that that was the actual beginning of the project because that gap of, it was endless amounts of gaps and how I was going to start making connections between these, you know, different time periods and these snapshots from his childhood until where he's he's age and he's he's my father's age, so he's you know he's much older now, and and how I was going to make the story develop started to, to rely on the gaps more than what I actually had. What do you think when you when you found this material? What what? I mean, it's kind of weird, crappy material. So why did you think it was the material of an artwork? But it, w it was everything I was ever interested in, and I think almost anybody would. It was snapshots. I mean, it's not it's crappy material in, in the sense of um, it could have been any, I mean, anybody's story and anybody's kind of leftover belongings. I don't know how that happens where somebody leaves behind all of their, like, you know, uh, personal items, um, and it kind of helped me even remain interested in the story because I kept imagining what, what where he was and what, you know, what would make somebody just leave in such a, uh, their, abandon their house like that. But um, it was hi everything I was ever interested in, highly personal, um, like access to somebody's supposed inner world and it was like the, the discovery of a ready-made story or something that a ready-made yeah in some way that it's all there laid out to be discovered if you do the research is that or <laughs> so, so you were just going to make it up I, like in terms of ready-made in the sense that sticking true to the actual research, like it, his life was there and then I'm... Yeah, I mean, you encounter this pile of stuff that turns out to be a person's life in some way. And then you appropriated it for your purposes. Yeah. And oh, I see. Invented yeah. it and reinvented it or... Yeah. Or dug up the facts. I mean... What's in the what are in the boxes in the middle of the gallery? That's actually, I mean, uh, that's my research material. That's actually just lifted and moved from my studio. Uh -huh. um, but it also reminded me of how I found. I mean, I I found his stuff in boxes in the room. Mm -hmm. So what I mean. But what is it? Yeah, in in terms of uh, its truth value, what is it? I mean, oh. when you said it's your research. Yeah. What is it? <laughs> you know? It's the actual source material. Uh -huh. um, so these are the things that you found. These are the things I found, and then how it started hybriding. It, it came from mm. starting to, it really came from re thinking about very legitimate or rational modes of um, information gathering. So I started thinking about lawyer uh, lawyers using that method of discovery when a case is going to trial, and how... Uh, the filing systems, mine is totally inaccurate. So, but it was an attempt at some sort of accuracy, of hyperlinking, you know, ideas between what was his, dissolving the line between my source material, which is his actual snapshots or his writing and his uh, legal documents. I have numerous things, and then all of a sudden just slipping in my own, and then just kind of seeing what would happen. And it seemed like a very natural progression. And that actually is not how even the merging of him and I, where this I still see as the first chapter of, of, of Larry and I becoming one. I think that there's other areas that have nothing to do with that. But uh, my natural inclination was to, to merge us as a couple. Um, so... I, when I had the graphology report done, rather than just having his handwriting, and uh, you know, analyzed, I asked her if she does anything special, 
And Can that's I just interrupt you yeah. a second. I mean, you said very matter of factly when I had my when I had his graphology report done. Um, how did <laughs> how did that happen? I mean, how do you get someone's graphology report done? It, well, y you mean practically? Yeah. Well, I, mean, I like, think like anybody, yeah. you look for somebody who's good. Like, so I, I went to the library and I was going to do it myself. And then I realized the book was bigger than I could handle. So I called the woman who wrote the book and she's court certified. And so I figured that would be more legitimate. I mean, I was still, again, a lot of people don't believe in, you know, graphology, even though it is used in a lot of corporations and, uh, and still, of course, for, you know, uh, certain court cases to legitimize, like an auto autograph and such. But uh, so that's how I would go about doing it. I mean, it was to me, it was a list of things. There's things I still haven't but, done. So you, I mean, I'm curious about the transaction. You go down to this person's office with. It was mail. <clears throat> with yeah. some letters or something? Well, it's yeah. so, it, once you start dissecting some of the, you know, it's. You send in, you give her money. That's the first thing, and then she, you send in uh, his handwriting in, uh, for to be analyzed. And then they have another method of free, you know, uh, stream of consciousness that I did, rather than turn in some of my own, you know, personal documents. And then from there, she did a compatibility report as us, a, as a couple. But uh, how did that go? <laughs> it's in the show <laughs> you can read but it's it's actually only a fraction of it is is shown in the show it's interesting because i went into it not believing that it was necessarily very accurate but the only thing that i could base it on was my own handwriting uh because i obviously don't know who he is i don't know how accurate it is you know according mm -hmm. to but um hers for my own was actually spot on so uh and you can read it to see if it's like that double language to see if it's one sentence that can mean two things. It's pretty, it's pretty personal. So I only could imagine that his might also be personal. And then I would take, uh, you know, accurate. And then I would take some of that and that would fuel maybe a video. And that helped actually define the, the ass video that was done, you know, just for this particular installation. So what about the so that the first video you take his head off and the second video you sew an asshole onto sew him. Sew an asshole, yeah. Um, let's talk about that a little bit then. <laughs> You're in a bunny outfit. This one's really I, hard to talk about. Yeah. So this is. But it's you know. It's, whoa. Whoa. <laughs> it makes me nervous even thinking about it. Um, that video was done again, um, edited a few days before the show. I mean, I know what went into it, and I know what research kind of like fueled the dialogue for it, which was based. Um, none of that dialogue was written, you know, by me or even came from some sort of stream of consciousness. It was all from the EST seminars. Um, that were popular in the 70s and the 80s. And uh, the Larry, you know, my subject, um, was, was very into Est. And he was also, you know, a lot of 70s and 80s kind of navel-gazing, you know, self-awareness, uh, uh, anything, you know, yoga to, uh, um, you know, writing his dreams down for his therapist and things like that. So all of the language came straight from S dialogue, from a real S seminar. Um, the ass, it just happened to correlate with the ass, which was another area that uh, the graphology report said that he might actually have problems with. <laughs> um, it's in the graphology report. Um, that he should go to a doctor and maybe get that checked out, and that <laughs> the graphologist sends you to the proctologist. No, <laughs> but it does. It did mention that she feels as though there's an area in his body that, anyway, and it, um, and he has a tar hard time, you know, uh, letting go of things. I don't mean it like that, but like you, so, so the video, the language, it just all started lining up. And he used to go to the Playboy Mansion a lot. And the, the Playboy outfit actually refers to another video that's going to be coming later. It's all kind of interconnected. Um, so what about the, how, what do the drawing, what's the story with the drawings? How do they function in the? They're just the, to me, they're the starting point. They've developed so much further. But to me, it was just charting. It's how my notes work. Um, 
they're always a little bit set up like a diagram and I like the, all the information mm. flattened in front of me. So there, uh, I mean, you've got the boxes of raw data, more or less raw data. Yeah. And then the process data in the, in the drawings, is that your process or something? Yeah. Or how I'll make connections mm -hmm. or sometimes it's l l actual real mapping, so I know where something is. I know where almost everything, you know, for myself, where it's l where they are on those charts, and I would re you know refer to phone numbers, um, but also so that accidents could happen, you know, so accidental collisions when you work on larger sheets and you'd write something down, all of a sudden maybe there could be a connection between two things that wouldn't exist prior. Uh -huh. And and then the. The photographic things are photos of paintings that refer back to the same material again. Is that yeah, the large prints? Yeah. You mean? Yeah. I wish we had the slide for that, but it's the, it's yeah the the very large prints of the snapshots. They are. Uh, I don't see. I can relate them to the drawings, but that's part partly the way we laid out the installation. Um, because it exists in my studio like that, um, I would always I would constantly document every stage of this project, just document the state of my studio, and I would have his actual photographs pinned up to the wall. Again, making connections between things or different cat categorizing things in my life that might be similar to his photograph it and then I was just as I was looking at the photographs I thought about making them into little souvenirs and thinking about the psychopath and how you'd see that traditional you know mode movies where the you'd walk into the back room and you would see the multiple you know pinned up Im images of the target or you know subject target and um, thinking about the de becoming the detective who has to I mean the detective who then has to become the criminal to access that mind and it developed into these little tiny souvenirs that are postcard size that um, I blew up to uh, the largest scale print that I could get so that it could be viewed like a... Was that like a forensic thing of... Because it, because the, my fingerprints, I mean, that was really thinking about trying to get the viewer to view the painting as a document and look for some sort of traces. Um, it was also because there's hair in it and there are my, f the, my own fingerprints are all throughout it. Uh, and I was thinking about Sickert, um, you know, being accused of being Jack the Ripper for a while where the woman who bought the, the detective bought the painting to try to find his DNA traces in it. So it's just like, you know, it was, a, it was a lot of intuition following it, but I felt as though the, the paintings need to be blown up and viewed in the, the the, the idea that I was trying to compress all of this imagery with these tiny brushes and then once they're blown up everything's lost there was no I was no closer to seeing anything and the filters kind of to me you know really exemplified the whole project that no matter how much scoping you know and how much looking I did and how many times I tried to represent it I was no closer to knowing anything truthful uh-huh <laughs> What were you trying to know? Do you know? <laughs> I mean, it's, you know, you mentioned uh, in, in that last answer, you said something about the sort of psycho killer wall. And Michael Ned Holte in his art forum review said something about psycho scholarship or yeah. something like that, which is a nice descriptive phrase. That was good, yeah. Um, but it kind of, I mean, it's a, it's a curious project because, it, you know, it's got so much information about this character who we're led to believe is real, but also kind of there's so many obfuscations that we don't know if it's really real or, or if it's a, fish, uh, a fictional character. And so there's all the play that happens between those two possibilities. But what really, to me, becomes very apparent is the, um, the centrality of, of this artist crazy figure who is sort of determined to find the truth about this person and willing to go to, uh, you know, one of these sort of extreme of uh, sort of getting under his skin and finding out uh, the graphology report or all these other kinds. Of, I mean, it's, it's a lot of very <coughs> extreme uh, research and uh, investigation and it's it sort of
teeters into some place where you don't quite know why. Mm -hmm. I mean, but don't know why that I'm after him. Yeah, I mean, if it's really him that you're, that you're after, if it's something else that you're after, that he's a kind of an excuse for. Yeah, yeah. What do you get, Matt? <laughs> I don't know. I'm. <laughs> I'm trying to trick you into saying something. Yeah, that's what I feel. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I'm still in the belief that I am at, at, at the heart of it, really trying not to understand him, but use him as a, it could be anybody again, as a, as a starting point to see how far because there's no all to know, but how far something can be researched. And there is some weird part of me that believes that I'm revealing maybe a real him that could even never be presented in reality. I don't know. Um, obviously, you know, if, as we have discussed, like there's a lot of autobiographical, like because there is no him that there. I mean, it is an attempt at really, it's, it's about like this investigation is, is about like the boundary between self and other. It, it is an, an almost an attempt at, you know, trying to collapse it or the, in a, the impossibility of that. Um, um, Yeah, so when I, I mean, yeah, very much so. And you know, you know the project from, from I, you weren't even at CalArts, I don't think the last year, no. But you knew in the beginning stages when I was thinking about this, yeah, there was, it, it really started with, um, with, with, it really did start with, with trying to, I don't want it to be all about like, the the ca organizational principles and like how I archived and but yeah the making of the doll very simply like the doll making um, voodoo things that were seen as le like not very you know as I said in the video like scientific <laughs> modes you know uh, imaginary play with the doll was coming straight from my own daughters you know my world, you know, so, and I was actually, I'm still very curious about what that's going to ultimately reveal. Um, Psychology. I mean, almost too much investigative thinking on that level, where you're only looking at, 
Right. In, in terms of um, the endlessness of it? Well, yeah. Um, yeah, the, it, 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 I'm stuck still what you were talking about in the beginning about facts because um, the fact fiction, um, uh, all, all of my previous work, I think that I'd always dealt with relationships, number one. Um, and um, things behind closed doors, but I was always very interested in, in the not just the merging and the collapsing, but the fact that that I I I didn't believe in any particular um, accuracy or, or facts or that there was any real story. I think this is I I've mentioned like where Michael Asher's head almost exploded when he was talking about my project, you know. Uh, where he was talking about facts, and I realized that we were having an hour-long conversation where we both didn't even agree on what that is. Um, um, I'm trying to think of a good example within this project, but um, beside the fact of starting from a real place or or using again like Western um, rational techniques like of investigating, such as like the, you know actually photograph, you know. I actually can't say that because it's illegal. I'm sorry. I just realized it. Um, uh, taking, okay. Uh, I don't even know how to say it. Uh, not stalking, but tr going after. <laughs> I'm looking at my lawyer. What's the word? Uh, but taking objective photographs of like where he lives, and then um, I started doing a, pro you know, started imagining what would be in his trash and trash and just merging these two worlds onto each other. Um, I'm not answering your question, though, because I'm still... We have we have these microphones actually. So if oh, you, you get a microphone. If you speak into a mic, everyone can hear you. The question I'm hearing is: yeah. Are you uh, Mary Shelley or are you Dr. Frankenstein? Because <laughs> 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 it's a very scientific, science fiction way of looking at this. You're yeah. trying to find kind of a mathematical formula to love and connection, and that's a very kind of the best of sci-fi has that romantic seeking at its center. So, yeah, I can't answer that. Like, it, I think um, 
you know, somebody actually told me at the beginning of this project they thought the ending is already happening because it's this uh, attempt at, it was from a book called Love in the Western World. It's an, kind of outdated and it's not published anymore, but it was, it was about the idea of the end is the obliteration of self, that I would actually merge so far into him that that's where the story, there was nowhere to go from that. But I don't necessarily believe that's true um, because the, the project's out, so out of, it doesn't have any linear narrative that I feel like I could go back 20 years before what I called the honeymoon period, which was my thesis show of him and I coming together. Um, I don't know. I can't, I can't, I don't I can't answer that. Um, I mean, no, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, I, I think, I think we're all trying to get at this, uh, something similar, which is the, in a way, the, 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 the subject of this story isn't that, isn't the main subject. It's actually the the self portrait of an artist who is intent on finding out something is sort of and that that the trajectory of that search then leads to these paintings where the identities of two fictional figures who are maybe based in real figures are are merged and so maybe if you could talk about the paintings or something well yeah the it's, it's, I guess why I'm having such a hard time answering that is it's also um, kind of hyper-linked for me. Like, um, even the paintings, like how they came about, was so reliant on, on uh, my research. And I remember the moment where it started happening came from the graphology report, because the graphology report, like that instantaneous moment where I realized, oh, we could do a report of us together and then being in my studio, I started painting the doll, um, the head of the doll, um, primarily because that's the, the, the part of the body I started with. And I, I'd always, I always have uh, a lot of, a large part of my investigation always is dealt with with painting, or is still the hope that painting can, you know, reveal something, you know, new. Um, and I started doing portraits of the head which wasn't him, but it was removed again. It's the, of the doll that I made of a picture of him from 1980 something. Um, and then when I started doing a portrait of him and thinking about the graphology report, I started thinking about merging. And then I started making, oh, I remember, I was on the computer, I was making what our fictitious child would look like by photoshopping a picture of him as a child in a photoshop of me at the same age and as I was doing that I was thinking oh what I wonder how paint could do that and I started thinking about the aggressive like the aggressivity and the loving act of kissing and then I just put them together that's really what happened up there with a question so are we to uh, consider what you're doing right now a performance I mean yeah. Are you in character now? Or? <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> it's it, it, it. No, not at all. No, but no. I thought about it, but no. What, what in your in your movie then? Are we to consider you a character or the artist? Because it seems like there was like wow. a little bit of a bleed over from your film into the discussion with the lawyer, especially. Yeah. You know, so it's like <laughs> if yeah. that's a fictional character, and then it comes into your like. You yeah. Know, right. No, she she thought it was a real she thought it was a real relationship, even though we're thirty five years apart or something forty years apart. Um, uh, that's really interesting. Uh, <laughs> where I end and where I I have a very for for myself I have a very clear uh, line between when I know it's the character I'm working with and not and it's come up actually a great deal because of you know obviously uh, you know even in Michael Ned Holte's uh, review he said we have yet to see if she's a psychopath or not yeah you know which I find delightfully funny but um, uh, I I actually know when I'm I'm in mode and when I have these interactions like with the doll you know some people have brought up this kind of me having sex with the doll and it's like again I'm not having sex with the doll 
and I'm very clear about it in my own head, but I, maybe I'm wrong. Like maybe there's some sort of dissolve of me into, I don't, I can't, you know, for personally, I, I know when it's happening. And I did a performance at our, uh, at CalArts grad show where I became him for like five hours. And it felt very relieving because I knew the line of, you know, this is not me. This is the, this is the performance that needs to happen. In that performance, you were kind of like a psycho in the basement, right? Yeah, yeah. but it was so. very, yes. And I'm playing into a lot of, you know, uh, yeah, like uh, I'm pretty self-conscious of, of some of the stuff. But the, turned him into the cycle. But I turned yeah. him, and I and yeah. I was doing self portraits from that, yeah. from from the position from inside his face, yeah. Um, which there were a couple images earlier that were on the screen from that performance. Um, it's a good question that I I but I'm not I don't see this as a performance. I mean, where it merges into my real life, I guess it could be seen as something else. Aren't you sort of having a little bit of fun with us, though? I mean, to make us like tease that line, and like you obviously mm -hmm. like when people bring that up. Like maybe she is fucking crazy. <laughs> you don't know. She could be a criminal, and it seems like that's a big part of this. Is like, well, maybe she's just nuts. You know, how'd she get so far being so nuts? <laughs> that's that's crazy. <laughs> but uh, I mean. Yeah, but surely, I mean, there is sort of, I mean, we expect uh, 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 in performance there to be a separation between the the actor and the and the person who has a life who's not on stage, right? I mean, it's, yeah. I mean, this this stage is a different kind of stage because it's a kind of intermediate between the, the performance space and life in some way, but... So you can, yeah, she could be in, perform in performance mode tonight, but, right. yeah. but I think she would have a bag of surgical tools or something. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I do. Generally, when I'm at, <laughs> generally when I'm at home or when I'm looking at the video, I call it she, but that actually sounds more shit crazy, actually, than if I just say I, so I just skip that third person stuff. <laughs> I mean, you can inhabit I and be a different I yeah. from the one that you're inhabiting. No, it was actually thing. recommended. Yeah. One of the faculty members at CalArts, who will remain nameless, said to me uh, to start referring to myself in third person to not get caught in that, like, female uh, crazy artist, you know, whatever, um, that she's actually crazy. Um, but I actually don't, I'm not too worried about it, but you are right. There is some sort of delight in being called crazy. There's some sort of, <laughs> uh, it, it, the, the intentions of the beginning of the project, there was some power in, in telling this, or telling, getting the chance to be the person who gets to tell this man's history. There, there was a, a, you know, a bit of a threat, obviously, that I was going after, um, that I, you know, basically went in and could hijack his life and tell it any way I wanted to. And I, and the performances and getting the opportunity to think of different ways of representing that, there was, yeah, there's some, there's a power in it. So, for yeah, me. I mean, I think for me, the, the, the static work, you know, the drawings and the paintings and everything have a, I mean, there, there's a certain, space of distance still with them that there's that you can look at them and study them and think about them but the the videotapes have this kind of maniacal glee about them that whoever whoever that is that you're playing is really enjoying doing what she's doing it, that's it, again yeah. just to point out like I those videos are exhausting mm -hmm. I, I hate making video because I know it's I hate to work with tech you know like I don't like working with cameras something always goes wrong um, it's almost to me it's another thing to check off so uh, on a list uh, the the ass video it was really difficult and there's like eight hours of footage that you know, but yeah, there must be at some time, like maybe it's the editing process, to be honest, because they're, it, it, I don't look forward to making videos, but I find them necessary. And the artists that I'm referring to by when I'm making those videos are part of a history that I want to be connected to. 
Um, and it's kind of funny because the distancing you talk about in the drawings, it's it, one of the more interesting things that came up recently was when somebody was visiting the installation and they felt like the most perverse thing in the whole thing were the paintings, like the actual act of putting those paintings together was there's something you know really perverse about it versus the video somehow just gets absorbed as something we're used to mm -hmm. you um i think this will be kind of contrary to the notion of you being uh nuts in any way because i i see the process as being extremely lucid on, on your side but can you talk a little bit about the pathology of Larry, specifically the pathology or the kind of un, um, undiscussed pathology of the boom generation in terms of their need to kind of delve so deep inside of themselves and all of the authority that you got from his failures or his missions with Est or with the self or with his life, how that kind of allowed you to do what you needed to do to exploit his life publicly. Wow. <laughs> it, it just, I guess, a way of saying that it seems it seems so fair to fight back. It seems so fair to go back at them and that you, generation you mean, for their selfishness. Yeah, but, but the, so, <laughs> but or self involvement. Yeah, but you mean specifically the 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 Larry that I've revealed. Yeah. You know, the time period, the the person he stands for. You know, in a really broad. And it, it's right to say that it's your peer Larry, right? Because it's, it's the Larry that if time could fold would be roughly around your age. The one I, yeah, oddly yeah, enough, the, the one that I've, dis that I've worked with yeah. is, yeah, he would be a little, he'd be 10 years older, yeah, but he would but be, I brought him into. that gap between. Yeah, yeah, and he seemed to also, you know, but I, that's not true. I, yes, I did. I, I filtered through thousands of photographs and I picked a very specific time period where he seemed to be at the top of his game. Mm -hmm. um, um, and, there were, and it was access to things that I would never believe I'd have access to, meaning like, you know, hundreds and hundreds of photographs with different women never repeating the same woman. You know, he, he, he loved to travel and, you know, find you know, women on his trips and take snapshots with them, you know, in bikinis. And he, he was, when I started really going through the materials that way, that's when I, I gained a great deal of interest in him. And, and, and perhaps another subject I wouldn't have dealt with as aggressively as I did. I'd be curious. There was an actual, another person's belongings in, within that house who was a woman who I, I've thought about maybe going on to work with her and seeing what unfolds or what happens when all three of us are together, or, you know? So, um, I don't know. Did I answer your question? I don't know if I yeah, did. Yeah, just, just nope. the, the, the notion of kind of basically commenting on the idea of critiquing you instead of you critiquing him, which seems to be what is really it play, that the only way to get at the level of somebody that hedonistic and self-absorbed and destructive, both personally and communally with his, I mean, if, if the viewer knows his kind of failed uh, investments in real estate, then there's a critique about something bigger than just him mm -hmm. and that the attitude mm -hmm. of some group that's so selfish that they would kind of barrel through life in the manner that he did. It seems only fair that you could only become who you had to create to tear him apart. Mm -hmm. Can you just tell the, I mean, Larry, who's the best at the more you know him, the more you're like, no, this guy truly is a natural right being. And he, like. You have the microphone. Oh, sorry. And he, like, um, <clears throat> you know, embodies all the things that really for me anyway, like really make me angry. You know, he's this capitalist pig, he's a playboy, he's a womanizer, he's totally self-obsessed, you know, in in the way of that sort of Bush generation of guys, not specifically men, but you know, <laughs> in in his case, you know, and, and like his exploitation particularly of young women, of women of color, I mean, he's like such a man. bad guy yeah. that doesn't, don't you want to just, no, get back at him? Or no, because I actually him? wanted to be very aware of the fact that I am more interested 
I'm curious then if this was at all, you know, successful, some of it, because the, I do want him to be seen as a pretty sympathetic character. I don't know what the point would be just to say, yeah, he's, he's a, if it was just that he's a, he's an asshole, then the, it ends there. It's like, great. He's you know, the blue eyed monster. He's a fucking asshole. You know, it's like, there was nowhere to go with that. So maybe that was one of the initial, of course, reasons to kind of merge with him because, you know, thinking about all, you know, many of my girlfriends who had that type of boyfriend, he wasn't very far off, but there was this like, oh, but you don't know what he's really like, you know? So, um, to create that intimacy. Did you discover any kind of clues to, you know, why? A, no, a, a, anything that would be ameliorating, you know, like some soulful little poems or songs that he'd written or. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, <laughs> it, um, yeah, he, he, he wrote, he was writing the beginnings of his memoir and <laughs> it was like page 119 or something where he That's pretty far in. it was yeah. but it was a very it was over like i think total he he just wrote endlessly but i only had a few pages in the video mentions this so um uh where he does he does mention his father's lack of love and um this is this is this was very interesting to me beside the lack of, it was his father's lack of love and all the pressure he feels to be uh, you know, the man. No, the mother's not mentioned very often. Um, and there's actually very few photos of her. But, um, but his parents were married. <laughs> we could get into, like, yeah. Like, um, but it, thinking about, um, that just, it just reminds me um, of when I was making this video, one of the issues, the legal issues surrounding it wasn't so much that uh, the facts. I was removing a lot of the facts from the video, uh, so I wouldn't get sued. And, um, it was, I kept thinking, you know, I could leave all the speculation in, such as, you know, in the video I mentioned, I don't think his father loved him enough and that maybe his mother wasn't around. Like, there were a lot of just total speculation. It came from nowhere other than reading a few excerpts from his memoirs. And I realized, you know, after talking to a lawyer, that was actually the 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 trigger point. That was actually uh, could get me in much more trouble. Is like speculating on, you know, why he is the way he is, um, versus just telling the quote, you know, the data of like where he's born and what her par his parents' names are, um, you know. So I don't know. What, what part do you think uh, moral and ethics play in? in the artist's role, like, or in your own, what are your own morals or ethics in relationship to art, or how do you think about the artists, like, and their relationship to moral, morals and ethics? Yeah, so not talking about legal issues, but just, like, moral, um, Aaron, that, I, I don't, that is a great question. I, I had stayed within the lines of the law, and uh, to the best of my knowledge at all times, like even when I was saying the word stalking before, I, I researched the shit out of it before, I really crossed the line and there are lines in it. Um, but I was constantly, uh, so though I might have avoided legal things like by taking out excerpts from the video and things like that, I was still left at home thinking about, you know, moral issues. Um, I felt like it was very important in this project to, to not overthink that. I, I, so am I, I don't know, I don't, I have my own gauge of like how far I'll go. I think I could go further and still be within the lines of legal uh, issues. But what does that have to do with moral? You mean like the speculation and allowing that to? Well, 
But you, but you mean like that I you might have utilized the fact that he could be, which is just again uh, subjective, an asshole that I would cross a line with him. Whereas another subject, if I didn't have that fuel, I wouldn't do that. And that's where we even where it started talking about fact and fiction. I I I rely so much on the on this quote fact, you know, whatever this starting point uh, or these concrete. Uh, so you 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 need these sort of uh, issues of factuality and legality and so on as something to the framework. Against or frame oh, I thought it was really thing. interesting to let legal issues guide my form for a while. I thought that was really interesting, and to see what would start coming of that. I mean, that's something artists a lot of times avoid. Mm -hmm. Is like, oh, fuck that! I'm going to do what I want, and I'm going to legitimize it by calling it art. You know, I wasn't. I actually thought that could be really interesting. Though, well, let's see what that will actually how that'll change how it's manifested. It says that you've never met the guy. That's right. Yeah, I um, no, I've actually never seen him physically in real life. Has he seen this? I hope not. <laughs> I mean, as as the is it here tonight? I mean, <laughs> I really <laughs> doesn't it seem likely that he will eventually. And how would that affect you? Uh, <laughs> I'm not the guy. Um, it would be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, you look a little like. <laughs> um, he, I'm um, an I don't know. I can't. I actually, I can't. I can't answer that because the because um, that would get me in trouble. Like to start saying what would happen to me. I don't know. I don't want to make it come true. Um, I don't know. He is not. It I seems would like it's such a small world. It seems so yeah. unlikely that with uh, two hundred of us here, if. He lived in L.A. and all these, it seems like certainly possible or even likely that it's going to make its way back to him somehow. Yeah, and I guess it's because the, maybe because the source material has been obscured and filtered and so far removed from itself that it would be, uh, it would be, m maybe it's just enough information that that could happen or just enough removed that it couldn't happen. Um, I mean, how many people leave houses full of, I know. All that intimate detail of your life. I know. Uh, and it, w it was a consideration that originally that my hometown wouldn't be revealed. and uh, But at the same time, you know, I, I, uh, when I was making the work, uh, it, was the, uh, it was so not about him the way it's actually, you know, it's manifested in something that's so far removed. I don't know if he'd recognize himself. It'd be really interesting. Um, you know, I've thought about it a, a million times, but then I started realizing to to actually meet him would be counter the point. It, it really has nothing to do with him. I think it has to do with the investigation. Do you have any more questions? Oh, there's someone over there. It's not really, I don't know, it's really a question. Uh, isn't the fact that he's an asshole kind of a giant gift like to your art <laughs> practice? Because we got a box of stuff by a guy who just drew airplanes, you know, at school, and there's great drawings of airplanes, but it, I'm not going to build my art yeah. practice around it. So. I think, it, I think, um, I think that uh, it could have been somebody who also left, you know, thousands of um, personal photos and their journals. I mean, the, what was the gift really was the fact that somebody was so self-reflective, like that that they took the time to write down their their dreams and and uh, I think I could have started from a point without him being an asshole. I do, just if I had the access to that personal stuff. No, I, I actually, I again, I have to say, I have gotten to know the version of him that I know so well that I have, I have feelings of like good toward him. So he, he could be perceived as an asshole to many, and I could have even portrayed him as an asshole, more of an asshole than he is, or less. It depends, but I don't. I think we have time for one more. There's someone at the very back. 
Would it matter if you had, in fact, fabricated some of the source material to fit the character that you wanted? I mean, or how do we know that you didn't? Yeah, the, I don't think it matters um, because, it, again, it's so. I'm, I'm not. I'm definitely not bringing forward this project as some sort of mode of finding truth. So. It doesn't, you know, if I decided that something needed to be fabricated in order to, to work with it, then I, then I would fabricate it. Right. So you sort of have free reign to create your ideal um, guy to obsess about negatively. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. Um, the question about um, what he would think or what he would know and the questions about him being an asshole or what have you. What's interesting to me is that he seems almost like this person who was probably very fleeting through other people's lives, like someone who does leave all their things, be their belongings behind and someone who goes through a series of, you know, home ownerships gone bad and pictures with all these women that were unknown. and. Um, also someone who tried to be really self-important through their, like tried to be really important in their life and seems to have possibly failed at that. And in a way that this project and one of the things that I remember you writing or saying or that are in the piece is um, I'm more him than he is and almost that you kind of doing this project and presenting him and presenting all this material kind of does bring more attention to this person than he probably ever had in his life. And that to me is one of the most fascinating parts about it is that here we all are and you know, all these people that from now who have seen the project are gonna read about it and see it, whether he ever does know about it, like it's almost kind of validating him in this way that he probably always wanted but <laughs> never happened. And yeah, um, that's, I don't know, really nice. Yeah, um, <laughs> it, it the, the curiosity about how he would um, receive this is it has crossed my mind several times. But um, what was the word for it? Uh, when you defamation of character is like one of the big issues in this. And I, I remember when somebody you know pointed that out, and then I I thought, um, what 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 was I doing that was you know that would fall within those lines and somebody pointed out, you know, ripping his head off and then putting it on me could upset him, you know, so that's where, even though it's not him, it's a doll and it's, you know, but it was, that's, I think that's where my, my actual, like, I, I still wonder, you know, how accurate I am and it would be so interesting to meet him and line up the stories, but yeah, I try not to, I try not to think about it too much. You may not try to, th I mean, but it's made us all think about it. Um, and I mean, I think unless anyone else has a question, did, that's that about it for the, for time. We could take one more if you yeah. wanted to. I don't. I think we're. I mean, it's been a very nice, rich conversation, and uh, I'd like to thank you for that and the work. And thank you. <laughs>